Hello everybody, welcome back to The Electrical Outlet, and in today's video, we are doing the first episode of OS Showcase, a new series I'm starting on my channel, which will showcase various operating systems running on various platforms from various time periods. Today's first episode is exploring a version of Windows that I haven't really seen covered anywhere else <clears throat> by any of the big channels that do showcases like this. And this is actually called Windows Thin PC. So, what is Windows Thin PC? While you probably haven't even heard of this version of Windows, you might have heard about its predecessor, Windows Fundamentals for Legacy PCs. This version of Windows was built on Windows XP, and it was basically a stripped-down version of Windows XP to run on old computers that didn't meet the system requirements for XP itself. Windows Thin PC was its successor, and it was based on Windows 7. It's quite an odd operating system, so let's take a quick look at it today. Alright, so I'm just going to power on my virtual machine and go into full screen mode. As you can see, uh, we have the same Windows 7 startup screen that everyone has come to know and love, as this is of course built on Windows 7. So I'm just going to let this start up. As you can see, we still have the same animations. It feels a bit more strange than Windows Fundamentals for legacy PCs, because it seems like many features that maybe shouldn't be present are present, even though it's built for very old computers. I'm also guessing it was kind of a market failure because of this. Alright, so what's the first change that we will see here from regular Windows 7? Because so far it just looks like regular Windows 7. Well, we should see that in the boot screen, because while we would normally be seeing uh, the Windows 7 thing, we see instead Windows Thin PC and uh, this separate wallpaper that is kind of reminiscent of Windows Embedded, which does make a lot of sense because this is actually built on Windows Embedded 7. So, all right, we have the startup sound there. This is a completely clean install. You can see I've just set a wallpaper and some other things, but the first thing that seems out of place here is Aeroglass. I was actually quite surprised when I saw that Aeroglass was actually included and functioning in here. It's kind of unexpected considering this is made for very old computers that probably wouldn't have support for it. So, what's different? We're gonna start by going into System Properties where we should be able to see what it thinks it is. It thinks it's Windows Embedded Standard with Service Pack 1, and uh, it doesn't actually say Windows Thin PC. This seems to be a common occurrence with uh, sort of smaller versions of Windows that aren't really sp have as much development time spent for them. They seem to just, instead of saying their actual name, say what version they were based off of. Like, uh, in the setup in, in the setup and installer for Windows XP Starter Edition, it refers to it as XP Home Edition the whole time. And Windows and so the only time we actually see Windows set Windows Thin PC, which on its own is a very weird name, uh, is actually during the logon process. It's referred to as Windows Embedded throughout the entire installer as well. So um, let's look at our all programs list. We'll really see the differences here. So first of all, there are no games, and instead, and many of the extra things are also stripped from here, and instead what we have is Internet Explorer, Windows Media Player, and a uh, Windows Update, and as well as an XPS viewer here. Accessories seems to be relatively full-featured. It has Notepad, it has Paint, it has the uh, WordPad application, it has a calculator, and the other and maintenance just has remote assistance startup is empty and then there's this other thing called subsystem for unix based applications which i have no idea what it is uh so what does it look like it looks like a version of windows x of windows 7 but with less features like even the wallpapers even as all the windows 7 wallpapers as well which is again strange this is supposed to be a stripped down version but what are the actual differences besides this? Well, um, it, it doesn't have as many fonts. Uh, Windows 7 has like 400 something fonts, this only has like 100 something, but like that's just again a very small thing. Uh, so again we can see the stripped out fonts if we open up WordPad. 
But um, another thing is it can't run any business applications, which um, mainly is just said as uh, it can't run Microsoft Office. And uh, a bunch of other stuff is also not supported, so it's basically missing a lot of the more intense, newer, high-performance features here that uh, Windows 7 has for running many applications. So it might be a bit hit or miss on what applications you can run. You can also see how few fonts there are. We've only got the essentials here, like Comic Sans. Like I said, only the essentials. So now I'm just going to uh, talk about some more things that are changed here. or rather, not present. Because it's really interesting that they made this version of Windows, because you'd think by the Windows 7 era most people would be able to run this operating system, but again, I guess you could say the same thing about Windows XP. But the funny thing is, when you're looking at a more light version of Windows, what you probably want to see is all the themes and stuff stripped out, but it still has all the core applications, whereas this has just removed everything. I feel like this did a better job than Windows X than Windows Fundamentals for legacy PCs did because it actually includes like Paint and WordPad and all this stuff, but like no Microsoft Office. You can't use this for much. I mean, when Microsoft Office is the one program I go to when just testing out a version of Windows. I install something like Microsoft Office on it. So the other things, the other removed features is um, it's removed the following things. .NET Framework 3.5, uh, System Restore is gone, Tablet PC support, Backup and Restore. Windows Defender isn't here as well, so you'll need to install a third-party uh, antivirus. Uh, it also doesn't have the Disk Image Burner, Windows DVD Maker, or Photo Viewer. So you can't view photos by default on here. Yet it strangely includes Media Player. So that's a bit weird. So another interesting thing about this version of Windows is that uh, it doesn't actually support uh, Pentium 2 systems, which um, is a bit strange as um, Windows Fundamentals for Legacy PCs, the predecessor, can uh, run on Pentium 1 systems, the original Pentium generation. So it's a bit strange that, again, the minute, pretty much the oldest CPU you can get Windows 7 running on is without, like, severe modifications is a Pentium 3. And, um, of course, with a Pentium 3, you might as well run Windows 7, because that would also be the minimum CPU for this, since it doesn't support Pentium 2 systems. Which is like, why don't you just run Windows 7? It's, again, an operating system that there's, it doesn't seem like there's, a lot of purpose for. And there's also apparently a 64-bit variation, which again doesn't make sense because pretty much all 64-bit systems should be able to run uh, Windows 7. As you can see, I have the 32-bit version. So, what about support? Well, this is the other really interesting thing about Windows Thin PC. The uh, support for it actually doesn't end until 2021, and not early in the year either. It ends in, uh, I believe, December or uh, October. These dates get a bit confusing sometimes. So, it is quite strange. All in all, it's just a weird version of Windows that makes you think, why does this exist? I mean, the system requirements are like a little lower, but you might as well run Windows. It's like a very niche amount of systems that would be able to run this, which is why I think no one's even ever heard of it. Uh, but, it is still an official version of Windows, released by Microsoft, that it will continue to be supported. Uh, so, that's it. Also, it's only available officially through a Microsoft Software Assurance Program, which is targeted at enterprise markets. So, that's probably why no one's ever heard of it. It's only used in, like, the elite enterprise that, for some reason, is still using computers this old. <laughs> so... Again, it's a very strange version of Windows, built for older computers, but includes Aero. Like, why? Why does it have Aero glass? That makes no sense. Windows 7 Home Basic doesn't have Aero, but this does. I don't know. So, that's Windows Thin PC. I uh, hope you enjoyed this first episode of OS Showcase. If you did enjoy, uh, 
you can like the video, that helps out my channel a lot, and subscribe if you want more tech-related content of any variety, new or old. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.